Mm. I'm excited about this. Yeah, it would be go. fun to see yeah, it out there. Hawk, what does the Cooper edition change specifically for Josh Allen? Yeah, it, it gives him a true separator at wide receiver, and, they, and they've been needing it since Ooh, Stephon yeah. Diggs left. Even mm -hmm. when he's played his best, spreading the football around. Like, you can see it versus the Baltimore Ravens. The way they played them, there was opportunities down the field that he is used to receivers making and getting open and the way that they run their routes that just were not there. That game got out of hand, but it was because they could not push the ball down the field. There were times, and, 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 and Dominique Foxworth pointed this out, that they were running cover zero with no blitz. Mm. Like they were just manning up their guys. Amari Cooper, <laughs> and that's crazy in the yeah, NFL. That, that's yeah, like yeah. A, a level of disrespect yes. that is like Ugh. unheard of. Amari Cooper, you can't do that with. Because yeah. in one-on-one, -on -one, he's one of the best route runners in the league. And what makes him so special, he's a technician. And what it means to be a technician, every movement, every angle, every release, every step mm. has purpose to either show you something that he wants you to see or sets himself up for a future route. Hmm. You add him to the mix of these receivers, it right sizes where everybody's role in this offense is. And it allows Josh Allen to have someone he can depend on on third down and in the red zone to say, hey, can my guy beat your guy? Amari Cooper can do that. Wow. I love that. To your point, in the critical situations, he now has a guy to win those one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. matchups. And they're playing against the Tennessee Titans. And Shefty said, don't know if he's going to be out there. But this will be him against LeJarrius Sneed if what? he is out there. And this is just one-on-one. -on -one. My guy is beating your guy. Mm -hmm. You mentioned red zone. Well, there's a red zone yep. target for you right there. This next one comes after a turnover. They fumble a kickoff. The Giants do. And the Browns get it. First play, they go up top. And that's Amari Cooper in the Late corner hands. end zone. Late hands making a play. So when you talk about a quarterback like Josh Allen, having a receiver that you can rely on in the critical moments and situations within the game and know that he's going to get open and win. And now on top of that, I know anybody that's watched the Browns this year, Deshaun Watson has struggled. But even when he God has hit Amari Cooper, yes. <laughs> Cooper's dropped the ball a ton this year. I think yeah. it's like six yeah. drops he has yeah. on the yeah. season. Yeah. But it still is an upgrade at the wide receiver position for the Bills. Before we get into the game, question. <clears throat> As a separating wide receiver, mm -hmm. what would be what Coop should tell Josh when it comes to look for this when I'm about to get open? Like, what would be the way that you would communicate to Josh if you were Amari Cooper, when I do this... I'm about to win. Is, is there something that stands out? The, the beautiful part about someone who separates is they don't need indicators. Like, like he has the ability to wait and see it, right? Because what you, what you risk by waiting to see it and then throwing it is that the DB can close. But as the quarterback, I want to know to play on time yeah. when you feel you've won. Yes. So, like, I, what would you tell me if I'm Josh, you're Coop? Patience. Same talent levels. I'm, yeah, same thing, right? <laughs> you guys are I'm really, Coop. Yeah. You're you Josh. Guys. As a quarterback, I want to play on time Role for, for sure. Right? <laughs> so, this, like, is, this, is, this is where it changes. It's going to mess with your, this your take typical. Time? But it's good for Josh Allen because that's how he plays. Give, be patient. Okay. Don't rush it. I'm going to separate. It's going to be an easier throw because it's not going to be where he's draped on me. So give me a second. If you long. give me a second to set him up, like if you watch that clip that J-Mac put up yeah. where he had like the delayed slant yeah. and he comes yeah. off very purposefully, but at the beginning it looks like a low. Yeah. So that's the one it's, big thing, patience. It's patience. Yeah. I'm waiting for this guy to put his guard down before yeah. I cut. That means it could be on step one. It could be on step four. You just have to wait on it, and as soon as you mm. see it, Fire. I think that's something to pay attention to in this game. You know, yeah. it's like how quickly that comes together. Tennessee's got a really good defense. Mm -hmm. If you're Buffalo, you're not running the football in, inside. Simmons and Sweat are unbelievably difficult to kind of have some success. So, okay, I want to talk about this because I think it's actually pretty interesting what Dan Orlovsky was kind of having the conversation with. And, and it's a difference between like a wide receiver perspective and like a, uh, you know, position player and a quarterback, right? A quarterback is looking for concrete things because – their game is so much more analytical, mathematical, um, uh, you know, intentional. And it's just, it's so much comes down to rhythm and timing and anticipation that they're looking for clear indicators to make a decision, right? To, to kind of see where I go. They have their progressions, right? It's just, it's just very literal and mathematical where as uh, position players, it's, it, it has that too, to a degree, but it's also going to be a lot more feeling based and, in, and instinctual based compared to say a quarterback. And it's, and, and that's why that relationship takes time. Right. That's why I think that conversation back and forth, because he's like, tell me what I need to look for. And he goes, well, there's nothing for you to really look for. And about quarterbacks, he's like, well, I need something to go off of. I, I need something because I, I can't I, I have to know when I think you won that battle, when I'm going to be letting go of the ball and where and, and what type of throw and all of that. And and that's why these relationships do take a minute or two. And then that chemistry 
truly does matter. I mean, it doesn't matter when you're throwing to wide open receivers, right? But like we can see that Amari Cooper is going to be set up to making some nice contested catches, or if he does have a receiver beat and have some separation, again, it's going to be so much based off of uh, timing and anticipation from Josh Allen. So I'm really excited to see that relationship develop on the field. And yeah, I get it. The Titans have a better defense than say maybe the, you look at that record and you're like oh they're one and four they're awful right and so you automatically assume like oh the bills should just you know uh just dominate but i, I get the argument that their defense is actually pretty good and so it's not going to maybe be the easiest game one setup but uh i have faith in josh Allen and the bills and, and amari cooper is obviously also a seasoned veteran at this point and i think it's so great for amari to come to the buffalo bills because i think he's really like a uh like a low ego type of a guy right like he's not this big ego in your face diva type of a receiver and so i think he's really excited i think he's going to be grateful to come to buffalo i mean like he's been pretty much just caught out on an island in in uh cleveland and so i i think him and josh can mesh very well they're going to get to work i think the rapport will be there and and i think it's going to be just I think again, Amari Cooper is going to be like, "Oh my God, this this is football." Yes, thank you, thank you, and and I think it's just going to be great. And Josh Allen's going to have the gratitude as well, right? Having having a a wide receiver that can that can make some plays for him. Uh, so, like I said, I, I'm I'm definitely excited to kind of see this unfold. But it is it is so interesting to see how like again, Dan Orlovsky is trying to communicate and being like, "There's certain things that I clearly." need to see and i feel like orlovsky pretty much kind of just gave up in that segment because he's like oh, well i need to see something and he goes well patience and he's like okay so patience that's that's what i need but i, I know deep down that's like that's not enough of a signal for orlovsky of like just to kind of have that patience from a from a timing perspective because uh like like i said things things for a quarterback have to be so specific and it, and it very much becomes a decision tree where it's like if i see this i go here if I see this, I go here. And if I see this and I go here and I see that, well, then I go here, right? Like it's literally, if I see A, I go to B. If I see B, I go to D. If I see D and then I go to C, then I go to, like, it's, it's so much, it's just, it's, it's, it's just more complex, right? It, it ends up being more of like a stereotypical thing of if you ever see like a TV or movie where you have some super genius who's writing all over a chalkboard and all of that. I mean, like that's literally oftentimes what's going through a quarterback's mind, which is why when you see a quarterback who's maybe pretty good, but um, is struggling when they talk about simplifying the offense and simplifying the game plan, it's trying to minimize all those decisions that a quarterback has to make, right? And you have it where it's very much now just A, B, C, D and it's just it, that, that's why I'm, I'm curious to see what can be the the elevated game plan with uh not only Brady but the, as well as Josh Allen and Amari Cooper because we saw it kind of unfold a little bit only for the half a season with Diggs but that relationship was clearly strained Diggs was unhappy Allen was unhappy and it was and, and also right an offensive coordinator taking over in the middle of the season now, of course, it's not going to be perfect because Amari Cooper is now coming into the middle of the season. So, right, that will also take a second. But I'm excited to see what happens when you have someone of Amari Cooper's talents with Brady and with Josh Allen in a relationship that's actually all positive and working together, right? Because uh, a lot of people are saying, well, why does this help? Diggs is better than Amari Cooper. And it's like, if we want to make that argument and say, okay, Diggs is better than Amari Cooper and Amari and Diggs wasn't good enough to help this, you know, get over the, over the hump for the bills. My comeback would be is that, is that we only got to see a half a year with a better offensive coordinator with Josh Allen and Diggs. But that relationship at that point was already severely strained and it was clearly already pretty much like done right? Like it, it was pretty much already done. So we don't think we ever really got to see what that really, you know, what the best case outcome could have looked like. Now that you're adding Amari Cooper, I think we're going to get closer to that more optimal outcome than what you got with uh, Josh Allen, Diggs and Brady. So yeah, I, I, I definitely think this will really elevate the team. And like I said, in a previous video, I think there's still more moves to be made personally 
Uh, I don't know exactly where I'd go if it's going to try to upgrade defense or upgrade offense, right? Continue to kind of just really maybe um, stack the deck in terms of offensively. I don't know. But as I said before, the Mari Cooper trade even happened. I was like, I think the Bills need to make a move. And then, of course, like an hour later, they made that move, which I kind of talked about in a, in a follow-up video. So I, I still stand by that, that I still think there's another move or two for them to make. I just, I haven't, I haven't settled on whether or not I think it needs to be offensively or defensively or both, quite frankly, uh, just to kind of really get this over like i made the example and said that they were they were at the 80 and they need something to get them farther to get to the to the you know to the to the 10 and into the end zone and it's like now this move i think gets them to like the 15 or the 10 and it's like what's that next move to kind of just really bring this home and now be like when we get to the playoffs you do not want to face us no ifs ands or buts we are here right we got that momentum we got that intensity. We're keeping the defensive coordinator up at night, the offensive coordinator up at night. Like, you know, we instill fear. I don't think the Bills right now, again, I think they're a top team and they're getting better, but they don't instill that fear, right? With the Ravens, there's fear. You got Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson. That's fear. With the Kansas City Chiefs, you got Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Spags. That's fear, right? Where's the fear for the Buffalo Bills? that's what I need to see like this, this next collection. Again, I don't know exactly what it is. And it's just like, maybe this move alone unleashes Josh Allen in this offense in a, in a much more threatening way. Cause we did see that there was some fear in those first three games. And you even saw Dan Orlovsky in a, in a way earlier clip weeks and weeks ago, he was like, this defense, this offense is so potent that without elite communication from a defense, the bills are going to hang 30 on you easily. Right. And he was very adamant about that. The team kind of somewhat got away from that in the last few weeks when they played a little bit better teams. So it will be interesting. Maybe just adding that piece to Mar adding Amari Cooper makes what Dan Orlovsky had said before more resilient and more accurate and more true than maybe it ended up proving to be. But I don't know. I'm just definitely excited to see how they um, how this develops and what other moves they continue to make because clearly the bills believe in what they have this season to me that's what this also signals that the bills signal the bills feel hey this is not a rebuild this isn't a retool we're not taking this year off we're looking around the lead the league we see what the other teams are putting out and we believe we can compete we need to get a little bit better but we believe that we absolutely can win it all this year because you wouldn't make some of these moves if you didn't the bills weren't in a desperation move right the jets were kind of desperate they're two and four what are they doing aaron Rodgers does not really have the offensive pieces around him they got to go out and get Devonte, right they also know that aaron Rodgers is hanging on by a thread here right like this could literally be his last year that's more of a desperation move the bills are making decisions based on way more stable footing and what they believe they truly can accomplish. So that's why I'm curious to see if there's other moves down the pipeline. But those are just my thoughts. I'd absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about the Buffalo Bills, uh, Mari Cooper, Josh Allen, and what this offense is going to look and, you know, really what else can the Buffalo Bills to kind of take it to that next level? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.